as an internationally renowned opera singer and concert recitalist. Shirley Verrett's performances and recordings marked her as one of the leading singers in the post-Marian Anderson generation of classical musicians. One of six children, Verrett grew up in a Seventh-day Adventist family where her father, Leon, was her first voice teacher. He had dreams of his daughter becoming a recitalist in the tradition of Marian Anderson and Dorothy Maynard. In 1955, Verrett auditioned for the Juilliard School's distinguished singing teacher, Marion Freshel, who persuaded her to enroll as her student. Initially resistant to a career in opera, Verrett began moving in that direction in 1956 after seeing and hearing Maria Callas in a Metropolitan Opera performance of Bellini's Norma. Verrett reached the pinnacle of her career in the 1970s and was generally recognized as one of the concert world's leading artists. In 1996, she was named the James Earl Jones Distinguished Professor of Voice at the University of Michigan. Her autobiography, I Never Walked Alone, the Autobiography of an American Singer, was released in 2003. Shirley Verrett made her transition on November the 5th, 2010, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Although the body is gone, the soul, the true essence of this magnificent woman, will continue to fill our souls and those of generations yet to come with her distinctive song. I am Marcia Porter, and I'll call her Cousin Shirley because that's who she was to me. Um, and on campus, um, I called her Professor Verrett, but in our own space, it was Cousin Shirley. And I am a professor of voice at Florida State and also a graduate of University of Michigan. Well, I'm Scott Piper. I am now chair of the Department of Voice at the University of Michigan. I have the honor and blessing to be sitting in her studio, Studio 2269, where she taught uh, during her years here, where I also was able to take lessons with her. Uh, Mr. Shirley um, graciously shared me with her so that I could learn from her. I knew her strictly as Professor um, Verrett, but even so, I have to say that even as a guest student, she took me under her wing in an incredible, powerful way. It was palpable. She would move mountains wherever she could for people that she, uh, let's say, believed in or supported, but we know that she did that with all of her students. We know that she did that for everybody. It's really yes. remarkable. I've had the life transforming experience as serving as Shirley Verrett's biographer and good friend. And over that time from when I first heard her when I was a child, I had no idea that 
I would be put in the position that I was put in. And she often said that God put us in each other's paths. And I have come to believe that a long time ago. She was a truly remarkable individual, um, a good friend, a mentor, and she helped to transform me as not only a, um, an individual, but even I would have to say as a parent and now as a grandparent. So ours was a, a relationship of many years um, of considerable depth. And, um, and, and I, I will value that above and beyond um, um, anything that I can really, really think of. But working with her was also um, a, a, a blessing. You know, if we had to describe Shirley Verrett in one word, oh. it's one, I know, I know it's hard. <laughs> you only get one word, oh, no matter how eloquent both of you are, one word, what would it be? Marcia, Marcia. you mind starting off? Yeah. I already know, gracious. Mm. When I think of her, I think about how both gracious and generous she was. Mm -hmm you know, with her time and her comments to students. And I remember Scott and I were in the Magic Flute together and um, she came to every rehearsal, even rehearsals when, you know, she had, I think three students in the opera, even when none of us had a call, she was at that rehearsal, leaving notes for everyone. And, you know, opening night, everyone got flowers. Oh, I would say I'm thinking about her as a performer as well. So I would that one word would be committed. That again, her commitment to what she was doing, not only on the stage, but also uh, with regard to her teaching, etc. So that would be committed. We have gracious, committed. For me, the word I would use uh, in this context is, when I think of her, I think of, of, of a guardian angel, an angel. Mm. I, I, in my life, um, that's really what, what she represented to me here as a student. Even as an advocate, as an angel, as I described her earlier, her generosity, her commitment was yeah. there. It was always elegant and gracious always so respectful of whoever your respective studio teacher might be. It like transcended these dynamics of, um, of singular ownership over anyone because she wanted everyone to succeed. But I remember um, uh, uh, I, I, I took over setting up her uh, master classes and arranging her travel and, and so on. She told me, what her specifics were, and I had to communicate that to whomever um, the host uh, was, et cetera. And there was one engagement in, seems like St. Louis or something like that. And um, she canceled it. And I said, what? I said, look, I got you know, every single thing, you know, business class, this, that, that, uh, flowers in your room, fruit, da, 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 da. She said, I know but I have a student who's getting ready to have a dress rehearsal and I, and I didn't write it down. I said, sure, I, oh boy, I tell you, I was seething. I said, okay, look, you are gonna call him and say this, but that's why I say committed because she had really decided, she said, well, when I do this or if I do this, I'm gonna have to do it all the way. And I came to appreciate that um, uh, a little later but at that moment, I, I was far from appreciative, I have to say. <laughs> I have two pictures in my office that are, you know, positioned in such a way that from any angle in the room, I can see either one of those pictures. And whenever I am, you know, struggling with my own practicing or trying to think of just the right way to say something to a student about what they've just done, I look at the pictures. Mm. And so when I'm struggling, I look at the pictures and I'll say, hmm, okay, Cousin Shirley, I need a little guidance here, please. And then I'll put my hand on my hip and I'll do this. 
And then I'll touch the piano and I'll say, now, darling, this is what my teacher would have said. <laughs> You know, so just thinking about that and how she always talked about when you sing above the staff, it's like singing in space. You just open your mouth and the tongue does the work, you know, mm -hmm. and talking about the vocal cords and you just blow the breath across the cords and they do this little thing, you know, and, and it, she would do this, you know, and you would go, OK, I think I understand what you're talking about, you know, reliving all of those lessons. I still have my lesson journal you know, with pages that are dog-eared and well-loved, you know, with a little bit of lipstick stain from where I, you know, touch my face and then touch the paper, you know, or my uh, magic flute score that she wrote in for me, you know, notes about things. And so just reliving all of those lessons and um, not just lessons with how to interact with your students, but how to be a good colleague. Mm -hmm. you know, and how to be a good, just a good citizen, mm -hmm. right? And a citizen of the art and respecting the art, you know. Thinking ahead to September 2021, we're coming up. You know, Dr. Brooks, you, you reached out in September of 2020, already having conceived of the fact that we should be thinking ahead to do something. Can you talk to us a little bit kind of of, of what, you know, in a nutshell, what started that? Where did that come from? Where did that generate? What were you hoping sure. for? Yeah, and um, 2020 marked the 10th anniversary of her death. Mm -hmm. And that was, it was really, um, I saw her just uh, for the last time a few months before she passed away. And, and I remember being in her house and crying like a little baby there when I knew what was coming. And, and, um, and I, in, in many ways, Scott and Marcio, Dr. Piper and Dr. Porter, I see myself as a preserver of her legacy, if that mm -hmm. means anything to you. Mm -hmm. in, in other words, as her bi biographer who knew her career, but not only her career, but I knew her personally, that I, I feel obliged to make sure people don't forget who she was and how great she was and what a significant artist she was. But I want to take a minute just to say once again, thank you and how enthusiastic um, and wonderful, how, how much enthusiasm I feel, but also just how grateful I am to have this space to share with both of you as we look forward to the September event. Um, so it's just really what a joy to be so far from one, one another physically and yet so close at heart when we're talking about Professor Shirley Barrett. I would describe Shirley Barrett as a vocal musical force of nature. I met Shirley when we competed in the 1961 Metropolitan Opera auditions in which I won my Met contract. And it was the only time that I ever bested Shirley in doing anything. We later performed together in Spoleto where I had the pleasure of singing her first Don Jose. And we also performed Carmen with the New York City Opera. We performed Oedipus Rex with the Washington DC National Opera and later recorded it with Stravinsky conducting. We never sang together at the Metropolitan Opera. And that was my loss. I was impressed with her strength of character, her artistry, her voice, and her beauty of soul. She was an ideal colleague on stage and in academe. At dinner in New York City one evening before she came to Michigan, I invited her to consider teaching, hopefully in Michigan. To my surprise, she decided to do so, becoming an inspiring colleague, pedagogue, mentor, and role model extraordinaire. My favorite Shirley Verrett performances were those in which I had the honor of sharing the stage with her. Shirley Verrett stands in the front rank of African-American performing artists, in the front rank of American performing artists, 
in the front rank of world performing artists as an exemplar of the gold standard. To describe Shirley Verrett in one word, hmm, the first thing that comes to mind is fabulous, but I think an even better word would be genuine. She had such a love for her students, she had such care for her colleagues, and that showed in all of the work that she did at the University of Michigan. I first met Miss Verrett in the summer of 2004. I was moving to Ann Arbor to start my DMA studies with her. And I remember I happened upon her in her office on a weekday before classes started. And she was just so embarrassed that I had found her in her velour jogging outfit. She didn't feel that that should be our first meeting in, in such casual apparel. She was always very, very ladylike and, and very careful in her dress and her demeanor. And that was a good thing for her students because some of them like to kind of hang around in jeans and t-shirts. And she, she really brought a grace and, and a, a respect for the art in the things that she did and, and the way that she dressed and acted. Um, I loved hearing her stories. The stories that she would tell would, would usually have something to do with the repertoire that we were working on in my lessons. I remember when I was working on um, one of and True Love's Arias from the Rake's Progress. She just came out one day and said, well, you know, when I worked with Mr. Stravinsky, and I thought, ah, you did, did you? Uh, you know, things I was aware of, but to have her just say that so casually, you know, working on the Mahler's Rickert Leader, she says, I remember meeting Alma Mahler at the Juilliard School. And I thought, you, you met Alma Mahler, wow. And, but, but the stories were always pertinent. They always had something to do with the repertoire, the interpretation, but just, just hearing these wonderful things, the people that she had met and the place that she had sung were fascinating to me. Because I came to Michigan as an older student, midway through my career, to start this doctorate, I, we had a little more, I think, than a teacher-student relationship. It was rather collegial as well, and she was very respectful of the work I had done and the work I was doing. She was always very encouraging um, with me and, and that was very precious to me, to our time together. I think that the impact she had on her students, being kind, being encouraging, but also being very firm. Get this done, learn this music, you know, this is what we're working on. But she, she loved us equally. Her musical theater students were such a joy to her. I know how much she loved that repertoire. Um, but you know, younger students, older students, it didn't matter. It didn't matter where we were in our career, where we were in our, our learning curves. She was very encouraging, very kind. Her legacy that she leaves as an African-American singer is also so important. The fact that she moved from the mezzo repertoire to the soprano repertoire, it showed that you didn't need to be put in a box for what you could do. And that was very important, as well as the fact that she was an African-American artist and she was so gifted and sang so publicly and, and in so many different places. I think that she really left something to encourage others to continue her work and I think that that is an extremely wonderful legacy. Shirley Verrett, I have even trouble saying Shirley, Miss Verrett, Professor Verrett, was was such a gift to me personally and such a gift to colleagues and students at the University of Michigan and to the world as a whole. I still miss her. I still think about her. Somebody gave me that and I thought that goes on the piano. Thank you, Miss Verrett. I was privileged to know Shirley Verrett as my colleague, but as a pianist, I also knew her as a teacher who taught a doctoral student that I worked with. So I played for this person's voice lessons. But she also touched my life in personal ways as she took a genuine interest in me and my family, as she took a genuine interest in everyone. You remember people by how they made you feel. As an artist, of course, Shirley Verrett moved us to tears. As a person, she made everyone she came in contact with feel special. It didn't matter who it was. Everything she did came from her heart, and it was a very generous, magnanimous heart. 
She was appreciative of everyone. I remember that when SMTD had their opera performances, she had flowers delivered backstage in vases, not only for her students and not only for all of the singers involved, but also for every single person involved in the production. Her message was that every person contributed to the success of the opera. Every person was important. I have quite a collection of vases from Shirley's Flowers over the years. As a teacher, she was one of the best and was completely dedicated to each and every one of her students. And you could always tell who were the students in Shirley Verrett's studio. Not just because of their singing, but because of the way they carried themselves, the way they presented themselves. They had self-respect, they had a sincere respect and kindness toward others, and respect for their art, for their profession. She wanted her students to find the light within themselves that would shine for others. I would say that her own light definitely continues to shine. She was a prima donna in every positive sense of that term, a shining, warm light that continues to light paths for all of us. Shirley Verrett to me is full commitment, passion, and the ability to ever evolve. I met Professor Verrett in my junior year of uh, undergrad. That was back in 1998. And I didn't really know a lot about her, so I looked her up and I did some research and was just like, whoa, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what an honor. What an honor to be in her studio. And it was just that, a complete and utter honor. She did not come from um, having you know, done this before. So she did it, uh, did it with what she does everything with, all of herself. She brought all of herself to teaching. She brought all of herself to each student in her studio. And um, she just showed up. She was there for every studio, every, you know, of course, every lesson, but every rehearsal that she could make. If you were in a show or if you had a solo in the choir, she was, she was there to listen to you, to watch you, to give you advice and just to celebrate, celebrate your, your growth and your, um, you know, being her student. She was there to advocate for you. She was there to encourage you. She was there to advise you. She was there to push you. And uh, she just gave all of her love to each and every one of us. And I'm just deeply grateful and honored to have um, had the opportunity to work with such an amazing woman and such an amazing legend in the world of classical music and voice and, um, yeah. And this, yeah, this is a real, real blessing. I'm so grateful to know her. And I'm grateful that we are um, celebrating her because her legacy is alive and real in each and every one of us and each and everything that she uh, accomplished in her life, which was a lot. I first met Shirley Verrett 50 years ago when I was a second year graduate student and a member of the Omaha Symphony Orchestra trumpet section. That season, Ms. Verrett appeared as a guest soloist. After hearing her sing, I introduced myself and expressed my joy and admiration for her performance. Having treasured that moment for years, I was delighted to learn that Dean Paul Boylan and Professor George Shirley had successfully recruited Ms. Verrett to the School of Music faculty. So I made it a point to meet her and to welcome her to the university. I expressed how gratified I was to meet her when she appeared with the Omaha Symphony in 1971. She responded in her beautiful and melodious style of diction, Darling, I never perform with the Omaha Symphony. I was momentarily taken aback and said, I distinctly remember you performing Manuel de Falla's seven popular Spanish songs. Your good friend, Maestro Yuri Krasnopolsky, was the conductor. She then said, somewhat delightfully, Oh yes, now I remember. 
It was my pleasure to become reacquainted with Shirley and to see the love she gained from teaching and nurturing her students. I recall her inspiring speech to a new student convocation. This is an event held in the fall to formally welcome all 5,000 plus first year students to the campus. A faculty member is selected to be the main speaker. Shirley spoke to the students about her humble beginnings and her ascendancy in the opera world. She encouraged them to set realistic life goals and to be persistent in seeking their dreams and aspirations. When she ended her talk, Shirley raised a pitch pipe, sounded a single note, and proceeded to sing Climb Every Mountain. It was the only time in my 20 plus years as a vice provost to witness students acknowledging their gratitude to a convocation speaker with a standing ovation. Over the years, Ms. Verrett was the recipient of numerous national and international prizes and awards, including several honorary doctoral degrees. To commemorate Ms. Verrett's glorious career and her commitment to social justice, I had the good fortune to collaborate with Dr. Gloria Thomas, former director of the Center for the Education of Women and members of the Women of Color in the Academy project to establish and fund in perpetuity the Shirley Verrett Award. All of the award recipients are people of excellence. They exemplify Shirley's commitment to artistic creativity and the success of women in the arts from diverse cultural and racial backgrounds. If I had to describe Shirley Verrett in one word, I would say glorious. She was infectiously joyful, musically brilliant, charismatic of personality, and deeply kind. I met Professor Verrett in 2001 at Opera Theater of St. Louis, where I sang in her master class and got to meet her. I had such a positive experience that I sought out the DMA program at University of Michigan and auditioned to become her student. I'm so glad she accepted me into her studio. She was a wonderful teacher and positive mentor. After I graduated, I stayed in touch with her, and since my family lives in Michigan, I was able to visit her in the years following my 2005 graduation. She was my musical coach, my teacher, my mentor, and later my friend. Professor Verrett gave her students beautiful flower arrangements to celebrate our performances. Her teaching style was compassionate, energetic, and engaged, and I enjoyed working with her on some of the bel canto repertoire she sang throughout her career. For those of us who graduated with DMA, she always insisted on using our titles with pride in her students. Professor Brett was so thrilled to meet Marian Anderson when she was a young singer. She represents the next generation of pioneers. The conductor Stokowski wanted her to perform with the Houston Symphony, but a racist orchestra board blocked her from performing there. Stokowski was so moved by her grace under such horrid discrimination that he subsequently catapulted her to a prestigious career with a featured solo gig with the Philadelphia Symphony Orchestra. She aspired to always be kind and gracious in the face of discrimination, which helped her on her way. Her husband, Lou, loved to tell this story with admiration and with deep pride. I am so very grateful that I got the opportunity to work with Professor Brett. Eons ago, when I was a junior in high school, I had the opportunity to hear Shirley Verrett in recital at Joslin Art Museum in Omaha, Nebraska. It was such a special and unforgettable performance. Before she had sung one note, the audience witnessed her transform right before our eyes. And we could tell what the song would be about. And we joined her in her deep emotional connection to the music and the text. That combined with the extraordinary beauty of her sound and her exquisite musicality made a profound impact upon me. And right at that moment, I was determined to follow my dream and to pursue a career in opera. All through the years of my teaching, I shared that important experience with my students, usually right before they were to give their first recital. 
when Shirley joined our faculty in 1996. It seemed like my professional life had come full circle. Shirley was a beloved colleague and friend. She was an inspiration and fierce advocate for all of our students and faculty. We miss her so much. In closing, when my partner Marsha and I were invited to Lou and Shirley's home, we admired his artwork and Lou invited us for a tour of his workshop. There, hanging on the wall, was a print entitled, Shirley, 1968. We told them both how very beautiful we thought it was. Little did we know that a few years later, we would be able to acquire that special piece. And it now proudly hangs near the piano in our music room. I'm very happy to have a few moments to say some words about Professor Shirley Brett. In all, Professor Brett was just one of the finest people one could hope to encounter. She was extraordinary. She was a diva in all of the wonderful ideas of that word, the idea of divinity. She had a vast wisdom to share of singing and of life, and she was open and ready to do it. She loved to be a part of the game in general, whether that was singing, if she was at the Met, if she was on Broadway, if she was with her students, and she was always, she was really always there. I, I miss her so much. She was a wonderful, wonderful person. I am just too happy to have this opportunity to say a few words about her. I first met Shirley Verrett in 1995. I never dreamt that four years later, I would become her colleague at the school and the 2020 winner of the Shirley Verrett Award. What an honor. Ms. Verrett was a fantastic mentor to her students and a great colleague for all of us. She set the example. We all celebrate this 90th birthday for her, but we miss her so much. What is the word to describe someone who has attained the highest echelons of performing achievement, who has walked through the most narrow of doors and yet is willing to lower herself to give her time, her energy, her resources to the musicians that would follow after her. Maybe gracious, whatever that word is, that was Shirley Verrett to me. I began my doctorate in collaborative piano at the University of Michigan in 2007 and had the privilege of accompanying two of Shirley's students in their weekly voice lessons one of whom, Melody Wilson, would become a lifelong colleague and friend of mine. Shirley was a woman of another era, always dressed to the nines, always in heels, never in a hurry. And she had this incisive, direct way of speaking that I really admired. Actually, that's how she taught too. It's almost like the clarity and directness of her vocal technique were an extension of her personality, or part of her musical self. She would often teach that one should expose the front teeth while singing, you know, not, not singing like their soul covered. And to me, that idea symbolized a willingness to be vulnerable, to allow the audience to experience the essence and the very core of her sound. To me, that was Shirley. One day in a voice lesson, she said to me, Joel, Here's a key to my studio. I'd like for you to be able to coach my students in the room. And then if there's nobody else using the room, you're welcome to practice as much as you'd like. I'll never know why she showed me that generosity. It was totally unexpected. She didn't know me well at all. But that beautiful room, wow. Practice rooms at Michigan were in scarce supply. And to be able to hold rehearsals, coach singers, it was a priceless gift, more precious than a scholarship. It made so much of my education easier. So Shirley Verrett forever graced my time at Michigan with her uncommon generosity, her poise, of course, musical excellence, and eternal good taste. I first met Shirley Verrett in 1996 when she joined us in the voice department. It quickly became clear that this unique diva was down to earth 
and here entirely for the students. Of her many outstanding qualities, three main things come to mind. She was a supremely passionate and consummate artist and teacher. She was unflinchingly honest and authentic, and she had class in every sense of the word. One of my favorite memories of her was during her first year of teaching, she heard I was going to a lecture at the medical school about the anatomy and physiology of vocal production and enthusiastically asked to join me. So we met at the hall at 8 a.m., notebooks in hand, and proceeded into the lecture hall with 200 medical students. They must have wondered who that stunning, beautifully dressed lady was taking meticulous notes. Shirley Verrett was our most dedicated teacher. She was the student's most active supporter, going to countless rehearsals and giving her invaluable insights to the students. And in faculty meetings, she passionately put the needs of our students first, at times with great vehemence. And on a personal level, she was generous and warm. One day she asked about my husband. When she heard he's a composer, she enthusiastically asked to hear his music. So he sent her a CD, never expecting to hear back. But she listened and responded in a letter to him with detailed enthusiasm, comments, and interest. I was amazed that not everyone takes the time to seek out new pieces, let alone take the time to consider listen, and write a thoughtful letter. We feel so fortunate to have known her and Lou, discussing wide-ranging and interesting topics. In every way, she was truly in a class by herself. Professor Emeritus Leslie Gwynn, who recently passed away, was chair of the voice department when Shirley Verrett was hired. A few years ago, I asked him to share a few words about her as I prepared to help present the Shirley Verrett Award. He sums up my thoughts perfectly. I am grateful to have an opportunity to write a few words about Shirley. The difficulty in writing about her is that after a while, one runs out of superlatives. She was a very warm, delightful, uplifting, hardworking colleague. To her fortunate students, she brought artistic insights and vision honed from years of performing at the highest international level. I have the greatest admiration for her integrity and I'm grateful to have known her. Shirley Verrett, I describe as energetic, vivacious, gorgeous, and she had that characteristic je ne sais quoi, as she would say. The important thing that she imparted on me, or the lesson I would say, is to find the good in critiquing actions of people rather than the negative, because that's so much easier. That's at least what she would say in studio. I try to impart that in my daily life with friends, family, and work. What I find intriguing about Shirley Verrett is that where she, what she found important, she would find the time despite her hectic schedule to give to her passion. For example, the grassroots campaign for Barack Obama. She's impacted this university of Michigan School of Music, as well as myself, and I am forever grateful for that. I'm thrilled to honor you, Shirley, on your 90th birthday with this short little message. I first became aware of your works through recordings. Uh, it was some years later when I was singing at the Metropolitan Opera in the early 2000s that I went across the plaza to the Lincoln Center Theater one night to see a performance of Carousel. Lo and behold, it was you who was singing Nettie. And when you sang, You'll Never Walk Alone, I remember the audience just exploding at the end of it. They came to their feet in applause and roars of bravo. It was a really special night, and, and, and it was really memorable. Some years later, when I joined the faculty here, you were on the faculty, and here all of a sudden we were colleagues. I carry fond memories of how animated you were for your students. You were very excited for them in our faculty meetings. Such a classy person. You were always so well-dressed. You were always an inspiration to all of us to, uh, to bring our best game into faculty meetings and into the voice faculty as a whole. You're not just a wonderful singer and a wonderful person, but you are an historical figure. For all that that you've brought to our school, to our art form, 
And to the world in general, I just say thank you and happy birthday. I had the distinct privilege and honor of being in the studio of Professor Verrett as a tenor and also as a collaborative pianist. It was such a thrill to get to be in her presence and to hear her stories and to hear about uh, the artistry and the history behind so much repertoire and so many of the great roles that she interpreted. But beyond that, I really feel that the legacy that she imparted to so many of us was the way in which she fully lived her life as an artist. And when I think about that, two words kept coming to mind. Um, intensity and generosity. The energy that she brought to her teaching, her desire to really grow as a teacher, was really palpable. And the high level of excellence and dedication that she held as a standard, not only for herself, but for all of her students, um, was really inspiring and again came from that very generous place it was about taking pride in oneself taking pride in our art form realizing that what we communicate to the world and the way in which we appear the way in which we talk the way in which we interact with our colleagues that all of that is part of being a world-class artist and so um, to that, in celebration of what would have been her 90th birthday, I'd like to say, may all of us who had the pleasure of knowing her continue to live uh, with her intensity and generosity in the world today. Happy birthday, Professor Ferrat. We would like to offer a salute to our one-time colleague and friend, Shirley Verrett, a divine diva, a beautiful woman, a true... Uh, a glamour girl. <laughs> um, I, I would always feel kind of schlumpy when I saw her in the hallway because I'd be dressed in ordinary clothes and she always looked elegant and uh, she had uh, so much openness and friendliness. You could talk to her about anything. She was a fantastic personality and a presence. Yes. It is something that you could see her walking down the schools of music, uh, school of music's hallway and here are all these kids in their sweats and their and their and their uh, you know uh, you know things that people wear their hoodies and so on. Mm -hmm. And here is this elegant creature walking down the street, looking every inch the diva she was. Surely we're waving to you up in heaven, and they're and probably too, they're and Lou too. Yes. Shirley Verrett, class, beauty, and brilliance. When I think of Shirley Verrett and that beautiful, unique sound that was instantly recognizable, my favorite role of Shirley Verrett's is Lady Macbeth, and her singing it at La Scala was just an amazing experience. That performance was full of energy and excitement. A great actress, a wonderful musician and singer, a great artist, Shirley Verrett.